Explain that during anaerobic cell respiration, pyruvate can be converted in the cytoplasm into lactate or ethanol and carbon dioxide with no further yield of ATP. In anaerobic respiration, no oxygen is used and it takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell, the same place where glycolysis took place. By means of review, let's look back at glycolysis and remind ourselves how glucose was broken down into pyruvate, that this required no oxygen and generated two ATP. Now, if there continues not to be oxygen present, the pyruvate is broken down into lactate in animal cells. Or if it's in a yeast, the yeast will ferment and it will produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. This does not produce any additional ATP, so all you have are the two ATP that were produced from glycolysis. In this demonstration, we used yeast which had been provided with glucose and we allowed the yeast to respire. We gave it an indicator, bromo blue, and before you can see that the indicator is blue. But afterwards it's turned yellow, and this is because the yeast has respired, has produced carbon dioxide, and that made the solution mildly acidic thus the indicator turned slightly yellow. So you can see from this that carbon dioxide was produced by the fermentation of the yeast. Fermentation otherwise known as anaerobic respiration. So in summary, anaerobic respiration in yeast involves first the breakdown of glucose into pyruvate and that was part of glycolysis and then producing ethanol and carbon dioxide. And conversely in humans you're breaking down the glucose into pyruvate and then in lactic acid. This occurs in animal cells. In both cases, you only have a net of the two ATP that were produced in glycolysis, and this is because the further conversion of the pyruvate thereafter generated no more ATP.